Hey guys, Monday again, which means more handstands. I know, it's, it's good, right? It's good. Uh, if you've not done them before, you can go and check out where are the handstand videos. This is aimed a little bit more for today anyway. People who are getting more and more comfortable on their hands. Um, and today I thought we'd be along with our usual alignment drills because, of course, always be doing those. That's consistency to your handstand training is key. Um, but past that, I thought we'd go back and revisit some tuck ups and some straddle ups. Uh, or at least the beginnings of how we're going to get those. Because it's just nice to be able to do a handstand in different shapes and different ways to get in it rather than needing a long space to do your kick up or maybe you can't actually hit the full height of your handstand because you're in a tiny house. Who knows? So maybe you want to do a small handstand. So I thought we'd be going over those. Um, as always, uh, class plan for today is a little bit of a warm up, uh, our alignment drills, and a little bit of balance on the wall. We'll spend some time doing our tuck ups and then our straddle ups. And we'll do a stretch down because stretching down is just stretching down is just nice. It's good for you. Look after yourselves. Keep you doing handstands, you know, as long as you can. Um, based on the the title card, uh, you don't need a whole lot for today's lesson. You just need a bit of space, as always, enough space to do your handstand, enough space to fall over and bail comfortably if that's what you're up to. If you're not, just some place where you can walk out. If you want a cushion or some mats or like a, a leftover mattress or if you're near those and you're worried about falling grab those that's that's always good um a wall oh yeah i have a weird wall so we're gonna be i'll be adjusting for some stuff but ideally you just want a nice plain flat wall without this weird cutaway um drink bottle is always always good as well especially if you're talking a lot like i am that's also just good to just to drink water, folks. Um, enough, enough rambling on, I think. I do that a lot at the moment. Uh, but just to get us started, just a little bit of a warm-up. Get yourself ready and moving and good to go. We're just going to go for 45 seconds of high knees running, followed immediately by 45 seconds of butt kicks. Uh, for the high knees, I want you to start focusing on pulling in with your abs already. We want to start warming those up, make sure those are going to be switched on, doing what we need them to do. And butt kicks is going to be starting to switch your butt on because your butt is going to want to be working as well. So, watch out for the light. But we're just going 45 seconds, high knees. Once my timer is on, we're going to start now. High knees. Nice and high. All the way up. Pull with head, keep breathing. Keep pulling in, keep pulling in, keep breathing. Out for a morning jog is all. And butt kicks. Squeezing in. Go for a bit of spin if you want. And the other way. Keep things interesting. 20 more seconds, folks. Now we can keep it breathing, keep breathing, come on. You're doing good, this is the warm up. Stop that one there. We don't want to get too complacent yet, I want to start warming up, so we're going to hold onto a wall if you want. Start doing some figure of eights with our knees. So it's opening that hip joint all up and around. Then we're going to do the other leg. Nice big figure of eight. Alright, do a little bit of shoulder work. So I'm going to crouch down for this because small ceilings. 
So it's going to start with nice big circles. And as these are happening, as always, we don't want to be doing this sort of motion with our chest. We want our ribs to stay tucked in so it's just our shoulders working and we're building that handstand shape already. Yeah? Nice and slow. As it's going to get a little bit faster, it's going to get a little bit smaller. A little bit smaller, a little bit faster. A little bit faster, a little bit smaller, even more, even more, even more. From here, I'm going to slowly start moving up. Keep that circle going. All the way up to our ears. And then it starts coming down in front of us. Over here, so yeah, there we go. And then we're going to go back out to the side. Again, ribs staying in. So to get a little bit bigger. So I'll get a little bit smaller as we do. Till we're back to our nice, sort of like flingy arms. I'm going to stop and go the other way. Yeah, it's really raining outside, isn't it? Ooh. We're going to get a little bit faster, a little bit smaller. A little bit faster, a little bit smaller, even more, even more, even more, even more. more. Tiny in circles. We're going to start coming in front of us. Then we'll start coming up. Then we'll start coming to the side. And getting a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger. A little bit big and big and big. We can start, we do our washing machines because I'm I'm just into these as a gentle little spine wake up. And getting a little bit up and down and get back to the south straight. You know, make sure your legs are a little bit hip width apart for this one. And as we do our washing machines, we're going to bend down, touch one knee to the ground, a bit of a lunge. So you twist, lunge. Get our legs working because they're going to be useful. Keeping our legs a little past the width, folding for a flat back just our hip bones. We want to hit about 90. If you can go further, brilliant. Uh, if you can't go quite as much, don't worry about it. Uh, but we're going to have our thumbs pointed to the ceiling, 10 slow extensions to the side, and really make sure it's to the side. It's common to be like, I'm going to the side, and your arm's actually doing this. You want it to be directly to your side, yes? Yeah? So keep an eye on that. 10 slow lifts, control the whole way. And we'll do 10 in a Y shape. Then we'll do 10 in the middle. Ooh, and apparently we'll also punch a light bulb, but that's fine. Nice and controlled. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then to the Y. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then ten by your ears. Two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, and then ten. We can hang out here, bend our knees a little bit, a little bit of a wave, a little bit of a flop. You can grab some water. You can take your jersey off. If like me, the warm's getting, the sorry, the room is getting warm. The warm is getting room. Look at that. He's got more beautiful circus hub brand underneath. So, which if you guys ordered any, uh, uh hoodies or t-shirts or stuff, they've arrived. Drop them to the hub and pick them up. It's pretty cool. I'm excited about it. A little bit of water if you want it. And then we need to get our abs going. So I know I normally like to just be like, alright, let's just do let's just do every dish rock ever. Um, but you guys know about those. So I thought we'd do something a little bit different. You need to get into your dead bug position. So you're going to be flat on the back, legs up, arms up. We're going to go for 10 little leg lifts, butt straight up and down. 
I'm gonna go team little arm, so arms chasing up your legs. So what that's gonna be. So I'm here, I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then arms, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just like that. And then we're gonna do it again, and we do it three times total. So you're waking up. Lower abs, upper abs. And then we'll do a little bit of disrupt to get everything into gear. So, again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Oh no, my computer's dying on me. No, we're good, we're good. Sorry, I will sort that issue out at some point. And we turn I'm doing okay time. So we've got one more set of those to do. That's it. And then dish rocks. Uh, but don't get too excited about those because we do have to get through this set first. So set yourself up. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Not so bad, eh? Man, I find the really ones actually really hard. You start doing them just for a solid uh, wee while, it really starts getting you. So we're just going to do for 20 dish rocks on our back, that's all, that's it. Get ourselves in the right sort of space. Set yourself up in whatever orientation you require. Same dish rocks as before, but if you're still new and they haven't done any of the classes yet, you're pulling your ribs down to your hips, and your hips are going to be rotating and tucking under, so your whole back's going to be flat on the ground. Your legs are going to be slightly lifted, your arms are going to be up by your ears. You're just going to rock, so feet down, hands down, feet down, hands up. We're just going to go for 20. The main thing is to keep your abs pulling in, and that contraction is with what's going to let you rock. So it's always this pull in, that slight rounding. Hips tucking under, ribs rolling in. Just 20. Here we go. And that's halfway. That's your 20 dish rocks. Nothing to it. Am I right? Am I right? I'm right. Okay. Take our hands. We can start doing a little bit of a wrist warm up because your wrists are important, especially for a handstand. Um, and for the wrist warm up, I'm here okay for you guys to tell, go a little bit more freestyle on this. Not that I can uh, really watch you doing it. Because at this point, you've gone over most of the wrist exercises I do. And you should be starting to figure out what ones are good for you. Uh, what ones have started to really work for you, what's, what needs a little bit more care and attention, what doesn't. But you're also just welcome to follow along with whatever I am doing. And if you do one thing, one way, make sure you go and do it the other way as well. I went this way now. I like doing these ones, so it's like sort of, so you're just going to go up and down for 10 times. But you always stay straight, push it forwards. Combined doors, fingers staying neutral to hands. And the other way. Three, four, five, six, seven, nine, and ten. Okay. Come on to hands and knees. And I'm not like sitting back, I am having a little bit of weight. In my hands, I'm just going to go for a couple of circles around. Oh, my ropes isn't happy today. Interesting. It's just some slow working around. Starting to feel out where the weight wants to go. 
Make sure your thumbs are pushing into the ground, your thumbs always want to be working as well. Circling the other way if you haven't changed direction already. I'll come back here so you can see what I'm doing a bit more. I'm just going to do some walks, so just rotating your hands around to whichever position you feel they need to be going into at the moment. Start to feel it out. We're going to do our regular sets of wrist push-ups. So for those of you who are new, we're stacking shoulders above wrists. So you see at the moment it's slightly behind. I want it to be nice and light. I want it to be directly over these knuckles here. We're going to keep our fingers on the ground, our thumbs on the ground. We're going to keep our shoulders protracted, pushing down to the ground. We're just going to lift our wrists up for 10 times. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Nine and ten. Then we're going to do the same thing, and this one's a little bit more confusing. We're just going to lift our thumbs off. So our thumbs and like the pad of our hand is going to come off. So it's going to be really tempting for your elbows to bend. Don't let them bend. Ten of these. We go one, two. It's a small movement. It's not a huge movement. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. We're going to be lifting the opposite side of our hand up, our pinkies. So for this, you're driving into the first knuckle of your first finger and your thumb knuckle. For one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The last one is we're going extension all the way to straight fingers. And with this one, it's going to be really tempting to push it back like this as it happens. You're not trying to do that because you don't do that in your handstand. You're going to push up. Everything about you wants to just translate upwards. So we're going to put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. After that, we're going to do a little bit of fish. Fish is good. One elbow goes above your wrist, and you're just going to roll it around, putting a little bit of pressure into that wrist. You can move your body around to make it happen as well, that's, that is a okay. You can go the other way, of course. And you can do the other hand. And the other way. And you can do both together if you want. Most famous dance move ever. Or not, but I think it's cool. Make sure you go the other way as well. Alright. Grab a, a little bit of water. Well, I just double check the time. Uh, go and grab yourself a little bit of water. Go ahead, do that. Uh, and you guys probably know the drill by now. We're going to go through our alignment drill. So same one against the wall. We're going to do something slightly different instead of our knee drags in. So we're going to do a 10 second hold. Straight into our 10 leg lifts. Uh, and for the knee drag in, this time we're going to be lifting our shin staying parallel from that flat position. Shin's going to lift up and tuck into our chest. You don't want your back to curve. You don't want your back to round. Your back's going to stay flat on the ground. So your tuck might not be all the way into your chest. Because a lot of time when people tuck, they use their back to actually round into it. And that's not what we're after for this. We want our back to stay relatively flat. Uh, but I'll demonstrate that. Actually, I'll demonstrate that now. And then we can just run through the whole sequence of stuff. And that sounds like a, sounds like a pretty good plan to me. So. Find your walking. <laughs> So from here, I would set myself up. I've got all my, my hips are tucked under, rolling this way. My ribs are rolling down towards my hips. I'm pulling my belly button in. I'm making sure my back's flat on the ground. My hand can't get underneath. And my legs are straight. My toes are pointed. My arms are above my head, pushing against the wall. And I'm going to slowly keep my shins parallel to the ceiling as much tuck as I can, which is you know, only to here for me at the moment. 
So if I go further, I'm starting to roll off the ground. From here, I'm going to extend my legs back out. So that's our new one for today. Um, now I'll tell you what, we'll do all four. Yeah, we'll do all four with that one last, because the other one's actually kind of valuable as well. So that's the plan. With that, so the tucks might not be amazing. My compression isn't the best. Uh, I know some of you watching have much better compression than that, so you should be able to pull them further. Without further ado, we're going to set back into position. We're just going to go for our 10 second hold. And when your arms are over your head, this is where you want to double check that your ribs are in. It's easy to make your ribs go in when your arms are down here, but as soon as they come up, they're naturally going to want to. Whoop. So you want to let that drive down and in. So it's like you're trying to push your armpits up, but pull your ribs into the ground. How slightly wonky I am. There we go. So setting yourself up, I'm going to push away for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We're going to start pulling our legs in, keeping our back and upper body exactly the same. Heels stay on the ground, and then we're going to slowly push out without letting our hips roll out. Our hips stay where they are. We'll do that 10 times. Keep pushing against the wall, keep breathing, make sure your ribs are still tucked in. And as you push to full extension, squeeze your butt. If you don't, your hips are going to want to roll out. So be three there. Keep pushing the wall away. It's four. Try and relax your neck if you can. Five. Seven. It's going to be eight. Two more. Keep pushing into that wall. It's nine. Last one. And that's ten. We're going to do our ten little leg lifts. So again, for those of you who aren't working, it's not a full up and down. It's just going to be a little 10-15 degree motion. And again, from your hips up, that stays exactly the same. That's what we'll focus on. I don't really care what the legs are up to, whether you're doing this is just makes it more extreme, it's more likely your hips are going to want to tilt, which is why we're doing a smaller range of motion. If it's really hard, go for up here. If it's really easy, go for down here. Ten of those, always pushing the wall away. So just take the time to reset yourself and go for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we've got our 10 rocks to tuck. So for this, you're trying to keep your shins parallel to the floor and the ceiling. So you're not coming in like this, or in like this. It's always going to be nice and straight. 10 of those. Here we go. 1, 2, 3, keep pushing the wall away, 3, Gonna be four. Keep breathing, keep your abs working, keep your ribs tucked in. Five. And that's six. Don't let that back come off the ground. Seven. Eight. Are your toes still pointed? Nine. Are you still breathing? Last one. That's ten. That wasn't so bad, was it? Over time, we're doing okay for time, even better. Even better. Now, normally I would be like, let's do two sets of those, but because I want to push through some tuck and straddle drills we haven't done for a while, we're not going to quite do that. I would encourage you to pause the video and do a second set, but you might not want to. Uh, and that is totally up to you. So last thing we're going to do is we're going to do three sets. We're going to be going for three sets of 15 seconds on the wall. I know we normally do 10, but let's shake it up a little bit. First one is both set of feet pointed against the wall, walking your hands in as close as you can. You're going to be facing into the wall, of course. Um, 
and that you're just focusing on that body line. That real push out of your shoulders, that rotation round to keep them up without letting your ribs sink out. Uh, trying to find that weight in your hands as well. So you're not trying to have it all sitting in the fingers or all in the palm or doing this curve out. It's really, really trying to drive into here. That's, that's the big thing I want you to focus on for this. Second set's going to be both feet flexed if you're comfortable with that. Um, and that's just to push you a little bit straight up and down. And the last one's going to be going for little floats. So I'm just going to adjust that so you can see when and where I'm going with this. It's the time. I'm doing okay. So first set is just going to be 15 seconds against the wall. Find a wall of your choice. And we're going to go up into it. There we go. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Good little warm-up, just a good way to check your wrists. Uh, give a bit of a shake. One of mine's starting to be a little bit weird, but I think it's because I pushed it too hard recently. Um, so next one for those of you who are still new to this, your, your feet this time is going to be pointed, they're going to be flexed, and hopefully this one does if your body's normally like this when you're against the wall, because your hands aren't right up next to it. And if you flex your feet, it's going to push your body a little bit straighter. Um, which is going to give you a bit more of a stacking, closer feeling to what your full free hold handstand is going to feel like. Because uh, if you think about it, when you're leaning against the wall, you're like this. Your free hold, you want to be like this. That's how that's going to work. If you're worried about falling out of it, grab a mattress, grab some pillows. Uh, if you're good with this, then, then you, you're good with it. That's, that's kind of all there is to that. 15 seconds, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Hopefully, it's starting to get a little bit more of a push in getting this. Some of it might almost start to pull you away from the wall a little bit, and that is okay. Because if you've got the weight sitting right in your hand, you can then lean into your fingers to help push back into the wall. And that's going to be the trick to start actually keeping your balance in your full handstand, isn't it? It's being able to use your hands to help push to keep back in, but it's not all about your hands, because a lot of it's actually your core and your shoulders. We'll get into that in a little bit, because that's, that's... Tux and Stradles really for teaching you that. Um, for our last one, however, it's going to be 15 seconds, one foot is going to be pointed. The other foot is going to be flexed. Don't die on my computer, don't die. Okay. Uh, and the goal here is for your flexed foot to slowly lift to point, so then you are not touching the wall with your feet. Um, so you start to chase that little free balance close to it. If you start falling, you can fall back to the wall. No problems. The whole goal is to not take the 15 seconds as a full free hold, uh, but to start finding that sense of float. Yeah? I hope that made sense. That was a lot of words to explain what I feel is not an overly complicated concept. Um, so just another 15 seconds. Find your wall. Go for a walk. And one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. So that's all there is to that. Uh, at this point, Actually, I think it'll be valuable, yeah. We're going to do a couple of sets of kick-ups, just so I think this is going to help us play into our tucks and straddles in a little bit. Water as required. 
please please water your hand balances. Feed them water then they're good to you. Um, we'll do a couple of carry-ups. This time our hands are going to stay on the ground. And um, this might be more challenging for some of you guys. You can't momentum into it as much. You're relying on more strength. Um, but it does give you greater control in the end, in my opinion. Um, so the way you're going to do this, this is mostly, uh, this is, I'm not really worried about getting up. I'm not really super fussed about holding the hands down from here yet. This is about your shoulder position, okay? Because when you start this sort of kick up, I don't know if I have space to do it in here. I'll show you what I mean for the starting position. I'm starting here. So you can see my shoulders are already stacked over my wrists. I'm not starting in like this downward dog shape. I always want to start as stacked as I already can get. The closer we can start in our handstand, the easier it's going to be to actually get into it. Um, so wrists or shoulders, feet as close as you can, that compression is going to help. Because again, if we're trying to start in a handstand and we've got our hips stacked above our shoulders, which stacked above us, we just have to lift our legs up. That's, that's it. That's all. Uh, but if you've got your hips far away and your shoulders far away, you have to move your shoulders in position, then you have to move your hips into position, and you have to keep all of that there while you then get your legs up. It's just more to do. Um, but even in the setup I've got, you're noticing my shoulders aren't fully open. They're here. So as I kick up, I need to consciously think about opening my shoulders. So what that feels like to me is I'm pushing my armpits this way, but getting my hips that way. And the biggest trick to avoiding uh, failure with that is you want to think about your torso as one solid block. You are you are steel. You are this like chunky piece of firewood. I'm I'm losing my my similes here. Um, but that's going to let you actually force your out instead of just taking it all into your back. If you go with your back, your shoulders going to come this way, your hips going to go that way, and you'll be in a beautiful contortion handstand, I presume. I don't know enough about that to really teach contortion handstands. Um, as you push up, it's the sharp push out of one of your legs and the other one needs to drive and lift up. If you guys remember the scorpion kick drill we did a while back, it's essentially that. Your leg has to lift you up. Um, so enough talk. I think I should just... I'll show you what I mean. I don't want to do a whole lot. And here, the, ceilings, the ceiling goes like this and there's a light bulb right in the middle. Um, there's not a whole lot of space. but. So I'm going to start, hands on the ground, I've already set my shoulders in that right position, I'm already pushing. I'm going to hit the wall, I'm probably going to hit the wall. You can still see me from here, okay. From here I drive and kick. And as you can see, what's happening is I'm pushing my shoulders open and I'm trying to get my hips stacked above. But my back leg's doing just as much work as my pushing leg. So, the plan of attack for this is I want you guys to do five each leg without moving your hands, so your hands are always staying on the ground, yeah? Again, I'm not going to do them with you because this, uh, this room's weird, um, and I'm going to find a new place for next, next week's class. But, for now, so five on each leg, hands staying on the ground, and even as your hands start on the ground, there's already that weight in the... Excuse me. Uh, already in the knuckles. It's not rocking into the palms, it's not sitting in the fingers, it's always pushing down through the shoulders into your knuckles. Here is your handstand. So pushing up, kicking to five, make sure you're driving that back leg, that's going to be the biggest point of success. And I want you to really focus on those shoulders opening, I want you to feel that motion. It's going to be really, really important for when we come to doing our tucks and straddles, so that shoulder opens as you go up. It's helping to lift, it pulls you up. You have to need to go over to stack above your shoulders. It's a big push out of one leg. Your back leg drives up. Uh, so five on each leg. I have no idea how long this is going to take you guys. Um, but it's always, always, always that big drive. The back leg's so crucial to getting this up. Unless you just like press into it, in which case you... Wrong class for you, man. There's 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 other people teaching more more at that level. Um, although we might do some breast rules later, hmm, maybe. Um, so I've done five. Uh, and a point of recommendation I should have mentioned to start. 
I would always start with your, your silly leg. Not your bad leg, it's trying its best. But your silly leg, the one that feels a little bit more gumby. Um, just because then you finish on a nicer note. Um, it can actually help understand what you're doing with your good leg faster as well. But that's neither here nor there at this point. Once you've done that, feel free to grab a little bit of water. Uh, shake your wrists out if you need them. Uh, I find starting this way puts a little bit more pressure on my wrists more because I'm already starting in that extended position putting weight into it. Uh, there's a little bit less shock into it though than when you do a leaning bunge up. Uh, that said, now we're going to move into our tuck and straddle rules. And I, we've done these uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, but for those of you who might not have done them, I'm still going to go over them anyway. I'm starting to really itchy. Um, so the plan of attack for these, it's, it's a progression to go into it. Uh, and you'll see why we did the hands on the ground kick up some little bit, because the shoulder position is pretty similar. A little bit more extreme, but pretty similar. Okay. So to start with, we're going to go for our sets of tuck-ups. So for that, I am starting... Oh, if I go off, I'm going to kick the light, but I just won't go up. Okay. So I'm starting... You can start with your... Uh, feet flat this way, or you can start with your toes tucked under. I really don't mind. I prefer this way, but that's probably because I was taught that way. Um, this way to me gets a little bit more push out of the toes without um, compromising, compromising your line, but you can do it either way. I really like personal choice, up to you. Up to you. I'm not going. You do you. Uh, so from here, I'm going to have my hands placed on the ground. And it, I want them as close to my knees as I get, because I want my hips and my hands to be as close as I can. Because the same thing as that uh, kick up we just did with hands on the ground, is the more you can stack everything from the start, the less it's got to move, so the less force you need to use to actually get up, right? And we want this to be easy in the long run. Might not be easy now, but for now we want it to be yeah. So hands as close as we are, and you guys already see how I'm leaning back. You're looking at me being like, Aiden, that's top shoulders not to do that is exactly right. It's a trick question. So again, my shoulders are already starting stacked and I'm already pushing up a little bit. From here, I'm going to straighten my legs, trying to get my hips up and back down. That's all. We're just going to do that five times. So you're trying to stack wrist, shoulders, hips. Might not, depending on how good your pike is uh, and also your body proportions. If you've got short arms, long legs, probably be easier. If you've got long arms, short legs, Maybe not. Uh, but we're going for five of those extensions. Feet stay on the ground, but you push to straight legs. I don't care if you have to start here. I don't care if you're starting here somehow. Um, actually, I do care. I want your hands, like, at max, by your knees. It's right by your knees, because that way everything's nice up here. Here, you're going to have to push back. So, hands sit up here. Fingers facing forward. I'm just going to go for five pushes. Here we go. One. Two. Three, four, five. Nothing to it. The big thing is that I want you to focus on that push goes all the way to straight legs. That's what's going to give you that power to actually get up, right? That's the important bit. Uh, the next step is we're going to push a little bit faster, a little bit harder. Uh, so your hips are still going to stop just above your shoulders. You're not going over. Uh, your shoulders are still opening. They're not going to give you this weird kind of planchy handstand. Uh, but as you push your legs straight, you're going to lift off the ground a little bit. You're not trying to tuck. You're just pushing up to straight legs. That is all. Okay? So it sits here. That's one. Just like that. You're doing five of those. Two. Oh, that was a little punchy. Three. Four. Five. Uh, and the goal with this is it's just trying to get that push to stack your hips above your shoulders. You're not worried about the tuck. You're, the best thing in this is I'm trying to get you not to do what I did in the second one, uh, where you just closed your shoulders. Shoulders need to stay open, because that's that's how you're actually going to get up. I mean, you can probably hold it with closed shoulders. You just see nothing this weird kind of like triangle handstand, which is close to a planche. It's not quite what we're chasing. The last one we're going to do is as you kick up, and of course you're going to stack, 
And at the end of your push, not before, if you go too early, you're going to pull yourself back down. But then you're going to tuck. And that tuck is like what we did earlier uh, with that. Um, on the on the ground of the wall with our shins parallel. So with that, your tuck's not, not necessarily going to be in here, right? Because look what my back does, that rounds. My tuck's going to be, I mean, my tuck's not great. My tuck's going to be here. And I want you to think about it as knees coming to chest much more than heels coming to butt because this isn't really a tuck. You want more this. Um, but it's really important that tuck happens at the end of the push. If you go too early, you're just moving the weight up and it's going to pull you back down. So it's long push, tuck, come down. We're not trying to hold. If it floats, brilliant. Um, and if you're worried about going over, if you're comfortable with forwards rolls, uh, I know a couple of you are quite uh, tumbling happy. Um, that's a really easy way to bail out of it. Just tuck your chin. Um, if not, grab some mats. Uh, a mattress pillow. You can do it close to a wall if you want, so if you do tumble, uh, your butt's going to hit the wall instead. I would just be careful with that because it's very easy if your shoulders to collapse in that position. Uh, that's it. We're going to go for five little tuck ups. So, setting yourself up. Uh, and it's okay, I'm just going to stress right now, it's okay if these don't work. These can take a while to get your body to understand what you're asking it to do. Um, so, they might feel really janky. But they might not. So there's only one way to find out. Five of these. Ooh, you see how early that was? Way too early. Sets up. Ooh. And then that was not a nice tuck. That was better. Last one. That's your, that's your basic set of tuck exercises that if you're chasing your tuck uh, or your straight up, those are what you want to do every lesson. Uh, every every session you're working on your balance. Or potentially at this point it might also be a strength thing, so good way to split that up how you want to do it. Uh, for our straddles, very similar, very, very similar. Um, it's going to be that same push to start with. Uh, sometimes I'll just do another quick five of those, because because we can, you are strong, capable hand balances. So setting yourself up, same position, hands, and we're just going to push for one, two, three, four, five. Again, it's that same push, that's that same thing that you're going to start with. Instead of doing the slight lift off the ground this time though, we're going to open our legs in a tiny little stroke. You should keep as much compression in as you can. So ideally, you're going to have your feet kicking your wrists. Um, that's the ideal. I'm not necessarily expecting anybody to be doing that. As you kick up, it's it's little. It's not opening to your full straddle. And we're going to talk about straddle in this instance. It's not a pancake. It's wide legs, flat back. It's not leaning forward. That's it is a straddle. But it's not quite what we're going for. So this one, as you count, you're passing through that pancake, but your full straight up handstand is going to be flat. It's not going to be. I hope this makes sense. I can't demo it because my uh, my straddle and middle split is kind of shocking. Um, but there is a difference between like this pancake straddle and this flat straddle. We're trying to aim for that flat straddle. Need. You pass through the pancake to lift up. So what I'm saying is, because I've probably confused you all now, uh, so we're going to push up, little jump, and your legs are just going to open to a tiny baby straddle and come back down. Uh, you're not chasing your full straddle, you're not trying to hit the full handstand, it's just a little push. So, we go to just there. That's it. And we're going to do another four of those. That's a prep, that is your pathway, that's not your full actual straddle handstand. Um, so for our last one is, you're just continuing that extension up. So it's a little open and as you do, your legs are going to lift up, 
you try to hit them flat. And the first couple times you do it, uh, you might not hit their flat shoulder, you might be in what's more of a star shape. So if your legs are hitting the wall, too much. So but it's it's really that um, it's here, not here, if that makes sense. So you're still trying to pull your feet flat so you, there's this hard edge to your handstand. Um, without being there in person, it's hard to... I mean, take a video. I would encourage you to get your phone out and take a video of what these first couple of attempts look like so you can start figuring out in your body. Uh, and that, we're just going to do five. So it's a push, open shoulders, hips stack, and your legs open. Okay? So five of those. One. Two. Oh no. But three anyway. Too much. Don't kick a light bulb, folks. Last one. Also don't kick a light bulb. This room is not the best for handstands, uh, quite, quite frankly. Um, but actually taking the video is going to lead to an important point. I would video yourself doing handstands, not a lot, because um, then you start getting into a very, there's a mindset shift. Um, ideally you want to be feeling your handstand as opposed to worried about what it's looking like for the most part. Uh, but it is useful to video so you do have that outside opinion and see what's going on. Do a little bit of a stretch down while we have a little bit of a chat. Um, so that's, that is essentially the lesson for today. Um, as always, like, send me some videos, ask me what's, what's going on with it. Um, we've got handstand zoom classes if you want to do a little bit more personalised training with me. Uh, much easier, much better to get actual feedback on how it's going. Um, if you're more comfortable moving around in level two at the moment, we have handstand classes at the hub, which is which is brilliant. Uh, if this one makes sure your elbow pits fall, you're not up here, you're up here. Um, you can sort of peel it off. Yeah, uh, Laura is doing handstand classes on Tuesday nights. I'm doing handstand classes on Thursday nights. Come, come do some, man. They're, you can do them in person, it's so good, so good. Uh, but again, if, you, if you're if you not keen on moving around, jumping around over two, are you okay? We still have these going on. Uh, I'm running Zoom classes on Tuesday nights. Come come hit us up about that. Uh, and we'll do our little, so you're gonna do fists on the ground, pushing up. Uh, yeah. And I mean, you're more than welcome to see me. It's gonna be like, hey, and my handstands feel like they're never gonna get there. What's what's going on? Um, but we also have a whole bunch of other classes going on. Uh, there's Zoom classes still going on. There's uh, I want to say Circus Fit. I believe there's a Contortion class still going on. Um, there's some bubble classes if you just want to do some circus with some people in your bubble. Um, we have a whole bunch of stuff going on. Uh, other than that, I just find, particularly after this drill, I like stretching my pike out. In hindsight, I should have done it first before we started, because that seems to make it a bit better. But you know, it's life, right? There's only so much I can fit into a, to an hour long YouTube video. Uh, but I hope you guys are doing well. I um, hope the earthquake didn't rattle too many of you this morning. Um, but I hope everything's, yeah, hope it's all good. Hope you're doing good. Hope, you're, hope your handstands are, are doing good. I have to bend one knee in at this point so I can reach forward. It's a little bit more targeted, getting a little bit more of that straddle set up because it's on an angle as opposed to it kind of going forward. But it's always nice. Just hang out here. Uh, be gentle on your wrists, folks. Just good advice. Um, no real reason to watch something that. Um, yeah, like I mentioned earlier, uh, 
the hubs finally had their order of hoodies and singlets and t-shirts arrived. So if you did order one of those before this whole COVID business blew up, come and come grab them. It's pretty good. Uh, let me know how many of you have come back for classes as well, actually. I might wave and say hi in space from a socially appropriate two meters away. Um, maybe some of you guys who have started picking up new skills over over lockdown. Some of you might have been doing um, Wazzle's juggling videos. Let me show us what you've learned from that. Uh, show me your handstands. Uh, how bendy you've gotten from Regina's contortion classes. Just, you know, just come say hi. Hang out at the hub a little bit. Like, if, if you're there for class. A little bit of a shoulder stretch, so sitting across. This shoulder's staying down, so it's not going to be up and down. It's going to be like here. So this stays down. This lifts your elbow up. You just, just hang here. And something else I had a student point out to me last week is just rotating. This just changes width stretches slightly. It's kind of nice just to play with that. Other arm. Just put a little bit of that shoulder stretch. A little bit of an open. So I've got my hand around my neck and I'm using my other hand to pull my elbow away and I'm using my hand to push it back. A little bit, I'm not trying to like really crank into this, I'm just doing a little bit. And the other side. Well, um, that's, that is us for this week. I hope you, hope you enjoyed. Um, and I will... See you guys next week, if not around at the hub, so have a good day.